welcome back. For this lecture, we're going to learn uh, how to calculate work using just the vectors using a, a tool called the dot product. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to calculate work using the vectors directly without worrying about magnitudes and angles. And this process is called using the dot product. Work is a scalar that comes from multiplying two vectors together. So there's two ways of multiplying vectors. The first one is the dot product, where you come up with the scalar. And the second one, which we'll use later in the year, is called the cross product, product where your, uh, your product is a vector. So work is the vector force dotted with the vector displacement. And one of the ways of calculating that dot product is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. If you know the magnitudes and the directions, that's great. That's easy to do. If you have the two vectors in uh, unit vector notation, or if you have uh, the magnitude and the direction for one and coordinates of the other, then you probably want to consider using the dot product uh, form of where you are multiplying the components and then adding them. So that would be the dot product form here is the x component of the force times the x component of the position, or the, sorry, the displacement, plus the y component of the force times the y component of the displacement, plus the z component of the force times the z component of the displacement. And that gives you work. So there's two ways of coming up with work. Some of the applications, some other places where we'll see this dot product uh, when we calculate power a little later on in this unit, it's uh, the force dotted with the velocity. And then in electricity and magnetism, we uh, calculate the magnetic field um, by multiplying the magnetic flux or dotting the magnetic flux with the current. Uh, and when you dot something, the quantities are biggest when the uh, two vectors are in line with each other or parallel. You get the same value if they're anti-parallel, but it's negative. And it's zero when the two vectors are perpendicular. Okay, now here's a pictorial of what this dot product really is. So when work is done, it's just the amount of force that is lined up with the direction of motion that does the work. So if you look at this diagram, force is pointing off at an angle theta, and the component of force that lies in the same direction as the displacement vector is force times the cosine of theta. And if you look at the uh, equation there, you see that there's a force times the cosine of theta and the displacement's in there as well. Uh, we call this projecting the force onto the displacement vector. It just tells you how much of the force, how, what component of the force lines up with the displacement. Well, here's an example problem, so let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so we have a force of 5 i hat plus 6 j hat minus 2 k hat. Okay, and we're going to dot it, so this is force, and we're going to dot it with the displacement, which is 4 i hat minus 9 j hat plus 3 k hat. And this is the displacement vector. And that equals the work. So let's go ahead and do this calculation. So we're going to multiply the like components. So the multiply the 2x components. So 5 times 4 is the first of 1. And then it's 6 times a minus 9. 
and then it's minus 2 times 3 and that equals let's see uh, 5 times 4 is 20 minus 6 times 9 that's minus 54 minus 6 and that's equal to negative 40 joules. So that wasn't too bad. So this would be fx rx. And this is plus fy ry. And this is plus fz rz. Okay, so that's what this is. Okay, moving on. Here's your multiple choice. Welcome back. Let's do another example problem. Okay, so we have a force, 5i minus 3j, acting upon a body that undergoes a displacement of 2i minus 1j. How much work is performed, and what is the angle between the vectors? Okay, let's figure out how much work is performed. So work is equal to f. In this case, we'll use the symbol D for displacement. Have to be flexible with this. Some, some sources use different variables for the same thing. So the force vector is 5i minus 3j. And we're going to dot that with the displacement vector, which is 2i minus J. And that's equal to 5 times 2, which is 10, plus a minus 3 times a minus 1, which is plus 3, which is equal to 13 joules. Now how are we going to go about finding the angle uh, between the two vectors? Well, we're going to use the properties of the dot product to do that. It's one of the great mathematical uses of the dot product. Uh, so we have force dotted with the displacement is equal to the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Well, we already know what F dotted with D is, it's 13. This stands for the magnitude, so the magnitude of the force. Well, the magnitude of the force is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared, Pythagorean theorem again, and the magnitude of the displacement is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared. So 25 plus 9 is 34, so root 34. And 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 squared is root 5. So I'm going to substitute in. So I have 13 is equal to root 34 times root 5 times cosine of theta. And I want to find out what theta is. Okay, so the inverse cosine of 13 over root 34 times root 5 is equal to theta. Okay, if we pull up the handy dandy calculator, and I'm going to find that second cosine. Mr. Bellamy, please dial 222. Bill Bellamy. Okay, so to find the angle, I'm going to inverse cosine 13 divided by, I'm going to put parentheses around this, second root 34, close the parentheses in the root, times second root 5, close the parentheses in the root, close the parentheses in the denominator, close the parentheses in the argument for the inverse cosine, calculate, and we come up with 4.40 degrees. 
Okay, so that's a pretty handy use of the uh, dot product. Okay, here's another uh, problem for us. And the kinetic energy change is equal to the work that is done on an object. Okay, so if we can find out how much work is done, then we can find out how much uh, kinetic energy is changed. Or if we find out how much kinetic energy change there is, we can find out how much net work was done. Okay? So there are a couple of ways of doing this. Gonna, I'm going to find out what the kinetic energy change was by using um, the magnitudes of the velocities, which is speed. So let's go ahead and uh, go about it that way. Okay, so the magnitudes of the final velocity, the magnitude of the final velocity, here's the final velocity, is 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. And that's equal to the square root of 6. And then the initial velocity is the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is equal to, let's see, 4 plus 4 plus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Now, the change in kinetic energy is equal to the uh, one-half times the mass times the final speed squared minus the initial speed squared. And so that's one-half times the mass, which is 3 times the final speed squared, square root of 6 squared is 6, minus the initial speed squared, 3 squared is 9, and that is 1 half times 3 times negative 3. So it's 1 half times negative 9, so negative 4.5 joules. Well, work is equal to the change work net is equal to the change in k, which is equal to negative 4.5 joules. Okay, so that's one way of doing that. Now let's move on, see what's next for, it's your free response. Good luck, we'll see you next time.